expansion. I start with Africa. I don't start with Europe. I'm not a European. So we refused to join those groups. They, they had a Christian International, uh, Socialist International. So I, I, we have never gone there. Never. And we told our people clearly that our focus is Africa. And here, I'm giving you facts now. I'm not talking about uh, stories here. I'm talking of cement. The list is too long. I couldn't finish it. I didn't talk about maize, about bananas, about beef. You, you, you know what is happening. It is Africa that is supporting us, and we are also supporting them. Therefore, the NRM was right to distill the principles of patriotism and pan-Africanism and to oppose groups that were pushing for parochialism in Uganda and Eurocentrism globally. After the careful analysis, we realized that our prosperity, first and foremost, needed patriotism, that is love Uganda, and Pan-Africanism, love Africa. We access other markets in addition, but let us secure these two levels first. This is why we worked so hard to revive the East African community and to consolidate Comesa. I salute the Waze, Daniel, Daniel Arab Moy, the late Al Hassan Mwinyi, the late, and Benjamin Mkapa, the late, for helping us in this effort. On the Comesa battle, I remember leaders like His Excellency Jean Baptiste Bagaza of Burundi, Dr. Peter Mutarika of, of Malawi, Bax, Bax Nonvete, he was our Secretary General, he was from South Africa, of Comesa, and others. The third principle of the NRM ideology is social economic transformation. Through education for all, Bonaba Somme, and wealth creation for all, Bona Bagagaware, by all the families joining the money economy and getting out of the pre-capitalist subsistence economy, or Korra Echida Kionka. The fourth NRM ideological principle is democracy, real democracy for empowering the people to grow and not cheap popularity that the new colonial agents used to manipulate the people. The correct philosophy, the correct ideology, and the correct strategy of the NRM, mark those three words, my, my friends. The world has got a lot of problems. Africa has got a lot of problems. Because they make mistakes on philosophy, make mistake on ideology, make mistake on strategy. Uh, the correct philosophy, ideology, and the strategy of the NRM have enabled the economy and society of Uganda to go through five phases since 1986. These phases are, number one, the minimum economic recovery phase of restoring aspects of the small colonial enclave money economy of the three C's and three T's. Our colonial, our small colonial economy was characterized by the economy of the three C's 
and the three T's. Three C's was coffee, copper, and cotton. And the three T's were tobacco, tourism, and tea. It was a small economy. But when Amin came, he destroyed it. I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to explain that. So when we came in, we had to restore that, that small island. That's why, that's why we are calling it enclave. Because enclave means an island. An island of modernity surrounded by a sea of backwardness. That's the situation we had here in the, in the 1960s. And, and that small island was, was, was comprised of the three T's and the three C's. But Idi Amin destroyed it. So when, when we came, we had to bring it back. This is the first phase we call the minimum economic recovery. Two, expanding that enclave with the more production of coffee, tea, etc. That small island was producing coffee of 2 million bags. We are now producing 9 million bags. That small island was producing tea of 23 million kilograms before Amini came in. By the time we came, tea production had declined to 3 million kilograms. We are now producing 60 million kilograms of, 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 of tea. So, number one, minimum recovery. Number two, expansion of the small island economy. Number three, the diversification of the enclave economy by commercializing the production of bananas, cassava, milk, fruits, palm oil, cocoa, fish, beef, etc. Because during the time of the British, they would say that coffee was the cash crop. Milk and maize and so on were not cash crops. They were just for, for home consumption. But we said, no, all these are cash products. That's why, therefore, phase three has been diversification. Phase four, adding value to some of these raw materials, such as cotton, fruits, milk, tea, timber, sugar, etc. The other day in my speech in Nairobi, I, I was able to castigate the African practice of, of exporting raw materials. This is very, 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 very dangerous for this continent. Here, I have banned the export of unprocessed minerals. If, if a mineral is not fully processed, I don't allow it to be exported. But even the other products, we are struggling to add value to all of them, even coffee. Now, number five, phase five, the knowledge economy through the production of vaccines, the production of automobiles, and so on. So we are now also entering the fifth phase where, where we use the, the science of our young people <coughs> to produce products. These measures have enabled the economy to grow from US dollars 1.5 billion in 1986 to now US dollars 55 billion by the foreign exchange method and US dollars 180 billion by the PPP method. Purchasing power parity method. With US, US dollars 1,182 per capita, Uganda now has entered the lower middle income status. We have just entered the, the ground floor of the middle income 
just the, the first floor where we, we are down there now. We were looking at the Mugrof Soka. To Mugra Koki Rakumunga Roba Nang. Apoyo Rubanga. There are, however, some still some trade barriers in the East African community. These are really roadblocks to our prosperity. All the East Africans should work to remove these bottlenecks by implementing fully the common market protocols, the customs union protocols, so that the fragmented markets of Africa become one market. With a more united African market, we can then be able to negotiate with other countries for market, for market access to, to, to their markets, such as the European Union, United States of America, USA, China, Russia, the Gulf countries, India, ETC. Internally, we have guided our people that the social economic transformation can be realized through Bonaba Somme, education for all, and Bonaba Gagawere prosperity for all, by joining the four money making sectors of commercial agriculture, manufacturing, services, and ICT. The government has provided grants or soft loans for wealth creators to use in joining these sectors in case they do not have their own capital. These funds are well known, Operation Wealth Creation, NADS, PMA, Entandukwa, Parish Development Model Money, Emioga, the Youth Fund, the Women Fund, Grow Money, ETC. This, some of these have been merged to become fewer funds, but doing the same, same work. These funds are mainly for the low-income people. The actors that are more empowered should, should borrow from the Uganda Development Bank for agriculture, for manufacturing, and some of the services such as tourism. We don't give loans for importers of perfumes and dead people's clothes. You know, I was having a big discussion with them here. here. Those importers I cannot give a loan to somebody, soft money, to, for somebody to import dead people's clothes uh, and import perfumes and whiskey and so on. No. The Uganda Development Bank money is for manufacturing, for agriculture, and for some of the services. If you want to import perfumes, go to the commercial banks. All we have said above is targeted to enable us to create prosperity for ourselves through wealth creation. The second historical mission is strategic security for Africa. African countries, or indeed other countries in the world, may be prosperous economically. Strategically speaking, however, they may still be vulnerable vis-a-vis other global actors. In the Second World War, the first victims of German aggression were the developed countries of Denmark, Holland, Belgium, ETC, even France, was conquered by Germany. Therefore, there is something about size. 
Indeed, the small countries of Europe were rescued by the mighty Soviet Union that defeated Hitler's army at Moscow, Belorussia, Stalingrad, Kursk, ETC, and were later on, in 1944, joined by the Americans and the British. As we speak today, only four countries have been able to land on the moon. These are the USA, China, India, and Russia. Why? Size and development matter. Uganda, even when it becomes a developed country, cannot have an overambitious space program. We are working on implementing a limited space program for overhead observation and communication, broadcasting and telephone communication. We shall have an overhead imaging satellite at an altitude of 600 to 700 kilometers in space. And another one for communication and internet at 36,000 kilometers in space. That, we shall, that one we shall share with the other East African countries.